Hello and welcome to this demonstration of XFlow for Dynamics 365. This demonstration will include scanning and interpretation as well as all the fantastic functionality that comes with XFlow for Dynamics. This end-to-end -end solution will provide you with enormous benefits and efficiencies, giving you a robust and proven cost-saving solution. To start with, let's talk about the scanning and interpretation solution. In order to work with your invoice information within XFlow for Dynamics 365 and all the benefits that that provides, we first want to capture the data in a way that is as efficient as possible. XFlow uses ReadSoft as its preferred scanning and interpretation solution. So why use a cloud-based AP automation solution? There are a number of very good reasons. It's an affordable solution. It's quick to deploy with low training requirements. There are no additional infrastructure costs. There's a guaranteed level of service and backup and data recovery is included. So let's have a look at the solution. Invoices can be received via email, paper, XML, EDI, or otherwise. If I want to upload the invoices manually, I can simply hit this upload button and browse to where my invoices are. However, this typically happens automatically with invoices being received into specific email inboxes via EDI and so on. On the left, I can see where I can verify invoices, ones that have been rejected, invoices that are in progress, ones that have been completed, and all invoices. It is important to note that invoices that have been interpreted correctly can flow through automatically to Dynamics 365 if you want them to. So what I'm showing you here are the exceptions only. Typically, the first time an invoice is received from a new vendor, the invoice should be verified. So the user would go here to the Verify module. From here, I can view the invoice history and have a look at the image. I can see other information, such as the receive date, the status, the buyer, that is, which company of yours, the supplier's name, the invoice number, and so on. All this information has already been captured without me doing anything. I can change the columns which are displaying here by just clicking on the settings button, and I can change the order of the columns simply by dragging and dropping. I can also easily filter on any information in these columns simply by entering the value at the top of any column. I can select multiple invoices to work with, work with batches of invoices, or simply for a start to have a look at the first invoice. Here we can see an image of the invoice on the left, which can be moved, zoomed in, zoomed out, rotate, etc. At the top of the screen, we have a few options. I can skip this invoice and go on to the next. I can split this invoice if I've received multiple invoices within the same PDF document. I can obviously save. I can reject an invoice. I can delete an invoice. If I'm not quite sure about this invoice and need further information, I can hit the request information button and send an email with the appropriate information to the recipient. And of course, I can print the invoice. We would suggest this would almost never be necessary as the image of the invoice is always available both here and within Dynamics 365. On the right hand side, we can see the fields that are being captured and interpreted. This list of fields is customizable. For example, if you have a company in the United States and also one in Australia, you may wish to capture different sets of data. Here I can see that most of the fields have been interpreted without question, as I can see them in green. As an example, the invoice number is picked up automatically by detecting the word invoice and looking to the right or below and capturing the data. In this example, it hasn't picked up our order number, so I can simply click on this field and then either double click or lasso the information on the invoice and it will be automatically populated for you. As I tab through these fields, I can see where the information on the invoice has been picked up. Line level interpretation is also possible, and if that was the case, it would look something like this. What is very important to note is that this is typically only necessary the first time you receive an invoice from that vendor. The next time, the system will remember where all the information is placed, so I shouldn't have to do anything. And that's it. Once I'm done, the information and invoice image are automatically passed along to Dynamics 365. Based on the purchase order number, the vendor's bank account, IBAN, telephone number, etc., Dynamics 365 will select the correct invoice or purchase order and attempt to match it. If the information is interpreted correctly and the invoice meets all the matching and tolerance criteria in Dynamics 365, then the invoice can go directly from your supplier to the accounts payable team, ready for payment when it's due. No need for anyone to do anything. If it does not match or is above tolerances, then of course it will go out for approval. Now, let's have a look at all that captured information is handled within XFlow for Dynamics. 
As you may already know, XFlow is a fantastic tool to assist with your accounts payable automation and help you get the best out of your ERP system. XFlow is completely built within the Dynamics 365 platform and certified by Microsoft. Being built in means that there are no integration issues or costs, no synchronization delays, and therefore provides a real-time insight into your AP processes. This includes online approvals, workflow, as well as historical data. Let's open up Dynamics 365. Please note that typically most of what I will show you now can and should be automated, but for demonstration purposes, I will show you step by step. Batch jobs exist to schedule and automate everything I'm about to show you now. Firstly, I want to point out that XFlow supports intercompany or cross-company, meaning that you don't have to log in and out of separate companies. You can do it all from one form. Just by pressing cross-company here on the top left and selecting show all companies, I can then see all companies to deal with. XFlow uses information gathered, such as the vendor's bank account number, IBAN, telephone number, and so on, to identify the vendor. There is a new vendor ID rules form where you can set up your own rules, even if you have a combination of unique identifiers to find the correct vendor. Firstly, and most importantly, you can always see an image of the invoice on the right-hand side of your screen. This can be toggled on and off by saying show or hide invoice side by side. If you would like to hide it to save some screen real estate, you can select general, hide side by side, and then you can still always show the fact bar and preview the invoice in a smaller form factor. Okay, so let's have a closer look at one of the invoices here. I'm looking at invoice 312066. This has been imported, scanned, interpreted, and now within Dynamics 365. I'm just gonna hit edit. I can immediately see that this is a non-purchase order invoice. There is no purchase order number and the line type is of ledger. I can also see on the dimensions tab page that this has been coded to account number 8210 and associated dimensions. On the approvers tab page, I can see that the current approver is a user called AXEDU01. Let's for example change the price and hit suggest approvers. I can now see that the approvers are still AXEDU01, but also 03 and 04. This is because 01 did not have the signing limits to approve such a large amount. The approval chain can be as simple or as complex as your organization requires. XFlow utilizes Dynamics 365 workflow, position hierarchies, signing limits, or a combination of all of these. As an example, let me split this line into multiple lines. I'm gonna change the price, for example, I want this one to be 200, and I'm going to say add a line. XFlow automatically calculates the difference, which saves you time. I can then code this line, and let's say it's a type of project instead of ledger. I'm going to choose the project, and then I'm going to choose a project category. For this line now, it has no approver, so I can suggest approvers, and based on the setup in the background, it's going to suggest an approver for me. An invoice like this, will trigger an email, which looks something like this. It is color coded to be red for invoices that are overdue, yellow for almost due, and so on. The approver needs to only click on the hyperlink to be logged into the approval portal. This portal is available within Dynamics 365 as a workspace, but also via a device agnostic portal. This means that you can use it on any of your iPhone or Android devices. From within the portal, the user can approve, reject, put on hold, forward to someone else, add comments, and many other functions. Of course, only if they have permission to do so. For a more detailed demonstration of the approval portal, please have a look at that video on YouTube. Let's have a look at another invoice, 001339384. We can straight away see that this is an invoice linked to a purchase order. It has line types of item. XFlow has used all the standard dynamics, three-way matching, two-way matching, tolerances, whatever you set up in the background, and found this purchase order and lines and matched them to the invoice. The charges that were on the invoice but not on the purchase order were also matched as they were within tolerances. Let me post this invoice and have a look at the results. Let me have a look at the message details. The invoice has been matched and matched without differences. Let's take another example. Let's look at number 00135 What I can see here is that the invoice has a purchase price of $781. If I jump to the purchase order and look at the line details, I can see that the purchase order itself was only for $642. Therefore, again, according to the tolerances set up in standard Dynamics 365, this should result in a price variance. Let's post this and have a look. 
Now we can see this has been matched, but with differences. If we jump to the documents form or the approval portal, we can also see this particular invoice has no match on this line and the matching comment price variance. This means that it's gone out for approval as it can't be system approved. And we can also see who the current and future approvers are. You may have noticed that the charges line freight was automatically approved. Again, this is based on the parameters. Let's look at one final example, this time with a quantity difference. Let's look at the invoice number 00160 I'm just gonna post this and let's look at the results. So we see here that it has a result of matched with differences. So I'm gonna to jump to the documents form and I can see here that this item has a status of no match and the matching comment quantity variance. So what's going on here? In this example, the original purchase order has not yet been received, but we've got an invoice for the goods. So now Xflow will wait before bothering the approver until the goods arrive safely. Let's jump to the PO and receive the goods. I'll just go to receive, product receipt, put in a product receipt number and press OK. So now what would happen in the background is this Xflow batch job would be running every half hour, hour or day, auto match purchase order invoices on arrival of goods. So I'm just gonna run that manually. So what's happened now? This invoice has been automatically approved because the goods have now been received, all other criteria matched according to all the rules and tolerances, and no one has to do anything. It goes without saying that Xflow manages delegations, for example, if I'm sick or on leave or escalations, meaning that if I do not do my approvals within a number of days, it goes to someone else in the approval chain. I want to add three more very quick and important things. Xflow supports agreements, meaning that an invoice that is not linked to a purchase order, for example, for rent, electricity, mobile phones, etc., can be automatically approved in the system. These can be simply set up for this vendor, this agreement number between this and that date range, with these tolerances, with this invoice recurrence between this amount and this amount total between that date range, it can be system approved. As another example, we have posting proposals. This enables you to automatically pre-code an invoice based on your criteria. We have an invoice from this vendor with this reference. You can automatically split the amount across multiple accounts and dimensions. This can also trigger a ledger accrual meaning that it can split into multiple ledger financial periods. Last but not least, a very nice feature is the ability to create your end of month accruals automatically. This looks at all the available information of your imported invoices, creates an open journal for you to review, and once posted will automatically reverse it on the first day of the next period. This can save some companies many hours, if not days of work. I'm just gonna run this function. I'm gonna hit okay and it's gonna create a journal for me. Number 65, so I'm gonna to jump to the general ledger. Here we have number 65, I can look at the lines. So this has created a journal according to all the information that Dynamics 365 has with all the imported invoices. Thank you so much for watching. For more information, please contact Sign Up Software directly or your Dynamics partner.